cancer cells are, are stupid. So. When it comes down to ketosis, there are so many different directions that we can look at. We're not just looking at how you burn fat. We're not just looking at getting the best possible shape. There's actually some really good therapeutic applications. And in this particular case, I wanna spend this video talking about the relationship between ketosis and cancer. So with me, I have Joe Anderson, who is a PhD in chemical engineering and an expert in ketosis. And you've done a lot of digging in the world of ketosis and cancer. And I want to be able to kind of turn the tables over to you to talk about what you've seen, what you've discovered in that world, and get a little discussion going on it. Sure. So there's, there's this idea out there that the ketosis can be therapeutic. So if you can get to a certain level of therapy with your ketone levels, they can actually decrease the, the cancer size. Um, I will say right up front, there's a gentleman down in southern uh, Florida, some of you may know, Dom Diagostino, who's actually actively doing research in this area. So some of the stuff is coming from him. But the idea is that cancer is tissue that's growing out of control, right? And, and cancer is made up of lots of cells. So when it's growing out of control, some of those, the fuel that's fueling that out of control growth can be sugar. So the idea is if you cut sugar out, get into a high level of ketosis, you're gonna kill those cells, right? Because they don't have any nutrients to thrive on. But you have to be careful because every cell in that cancer isn't necessarily being fueled by sugar. Some will be fueled by fats. So this doesn't work for every cancer. But they seem to indicate that some of the brain cancers, the nasty ones, are uh, responsive to this keto therapy. And then you have some other cancers as well. The other idea within that is that some of the cancers are responding to the insulin. So if you have sugar, sugar is driving your insulin to be elevated but that elevated insulin may also be um, helping the cancer uh, grow out of control. So once again, decrease sugar, decrease the fuel for the cancer cells, but also decrease that insulin response that's causing um, a response to those cancer cells as well. Gotcha. Now, now cancer is not my world of expertise, other than the fact, I mean, I lost my father to cancer in February, so it's near and dear to me, but I still don't have the breadth of knowledge that uh, a lot of clinicians do in the, in the world of cancer. So can you just describe exactly like how a cancer cell works and how it might feed and how it might be glycolytic, just so that the viewers have an understanding of really how that works in general and how keto could potentially starve that out? Sure, and, and I'm not gonna try to pretend I'm a, a cancer expert, but I've certainly done some research on this in terms of reading the scientific literature to understand it better. But essentially cancer is a cell that doesn't know when to stop growing and stop dividing. So the, the cells, your cell will grow, 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 and then at some point it can divide into a second cell. But that process is well controlled. In a cancer cell, the control, which is at this, the DNA level, is not properly, um, there, there's not a good stop to that. So the cell will grow and divide and it'll kind of pick up speed and it'll continue to grow and divide, grow and divide. And that growth and division, which is not controlled because the cell has had a mutation in the DNA or the, that control isn't present, then the cancer grows out of control. So the, the cell needs fuel. There's two ways. N number one, the fuel has to get there. So you see a lot of blood vessel growth to get the sugars and the other nutrients to the, the tumor. Um, the second thing is the fuel that's typically going to use, uh, many times it will be sugar, not necessarily all the time. But the reason it uses sugar is because it's simple. You can use a simple pathway, um, the mitochondria in the cells, which is gonna use fats and use other, other, other energy sources, doesn't have to be used when you're, when you're burning sugar. So, so these, the, the high, whole hypothesis is that these tumor cells are really growing after sugar as a fuel source. And once again, if you can cut back that sugar as a fuel source, you can kill those cells and then potentially decrease the tumor size. Gotcha. Now, when you talk about uh, sort of the DNA of a cancer cell, there's been a lot of evidence that's now starting to show that ketosis can alter gene expression and, and change some of these in a positive way. And again, this, is, this may be a hypothesis for you, but looking at the fact that it can do that, do you think that that's one of the ways, too, is that maybe it's going to actually start corralling the, the rogue cells of cancer cells, that rogue portion of it, by altering the gene expression even of the cancer cells? So that's certainly that's certainly an interesting hypothesis, and I will certainly I won't be able to give you an answer of it. But I think your point is the keto therapy is going to be multifactorial, meaning it's going to affect lots of different avenues. It's going to cut off the sugar. It may help. It's going to help control the insulin. 
It's going to change the DNA expression in some respects. How powerful each one of those are will depend on not only the cancer, but also um, how much in ketosis you're at and, and also other variables as well. So they're still trying to figure out that whole spectrum. And I know some about it, but there's certainly other people who probably know that better than I do. Well, I know Dr. Dom D'Agostino at University of South Florida talks about um, it, using ketosis actually as a catalyst to improve chemotherapy as well. Right. Um, and, and you might know some of his studies a little bit better than I do. I know it's sort of on the surface level. Um, and is that simply because it's slowing down the growth so that the chemo can do its job? Or are there other reasons behind that? It could be that. It, the other piece is you can imagine if you start to starve the cells, the cells are very eager to take up more and more chemicals to continue their growth. So if they're eager to take up those chemicals, when you put the chemotherapeutic right after the starvation phase, that may make it more effective to kill the cells because they're really pulling in as many chemicals as they can. Once again, hypothesis has not been demonstrated. It has not been demonstrated, but you're right. The fasting is what one thing he recommends before chemotherapy and also going on a ketogenic diet. Um, both seem to have some beneficial effects. And once again, those studies are still being performed and we're learning more about them as we speak now. And that's what I appreciate. One of the things I appreciate most about Dr. D'Agostino is how he, he doesn't say that ketosis is the end all be all. He uses it as, again, I use this word a lot, but he uses it as a catalyst for other things to work better. And he's not saying that everyone needs to be in ketosis. And he's not saying that, you know, it's, he's not always predicating the, the, the diet. He's more so talking about here's what's, happen here's what's happening in your body when you're in ketosis and here's why different things work better when you're in a state of ketosis. And I think a lot of it simply has to do with inflammation, which is something that I talk about a lot, something that Dom talks about a lot. And the fact that beta hydroxybutyrate, these ketone bodies that we measure with devices like Level are elevated when we're in a state of ketosis and they in and of themselves are anti-inflammatory and inflammation has a direct correlation with cancer. And it just creates a smoother transition, a smoother communication between cells so that things can get done properly. Yeah, and I, and I just want to kind of piggyback and kind of say, remember that even if you use keto therapeutics, isn't going to be for every cancer. And even if it does work on a cancer, you got to be careful because there may be other regions in that cancer that actually use fat for fuel. So it's not going to be the end all be all but it certainly may help the therapies that you're trying to provide to, to kill it. Mm. Yep. I'm gonna leave with this noodle because this is an interesting thought and I want everyone to think about this too and you to think about it too because it just came to mind. As a population, as we get more keto adapted, as we start utilizing more fats as a source of fuel, do we potentially run the risk of cancers actually preferentially starting to run on fats more as it becomes the more prevalent fuel source. Now, I'm, not, I'm just playing devil's advocate here, being totally honest and being an advocate for my viewers too by being playing devil's advocate. We don't have to answer that right now, but I wanna, I wanna put some thought into that because as we become keto adapted, do fat cells become keto adapted or do uh, cancer cells become keto adapted as well? Yeah, it's, it's simply unknown. I, my speculation, which is all it is, would be no. I don't think, you may see some increase, but I would imagine that the whole cancer rate would, would drop, but that's yeah. a speculation. I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you on that too. I'm from the school of thought that cancer cells are lazy and that's why they want simple sugars. They just want to grow. They just, they, they want to just consume. They just want to consume and fat adaptation is too biochemically difficult for them to really, I think it would take years and years, it would take thousands and thousands, if not tens of thousands of years for any kind of mutation like that to occur. Yeah. When you think about utilization of fats for fuels is more complex than utilization of sugar for fuel. Fats, so. I mean, cancer cells are, are stupid, so <laughs> I'll, I'll leave you with that. Cancer cells are stupid. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Yeah, you got it. Thank you.